Well, as we know, today it was the condition of the state from Governor Kim Reynolds, and we have heard her speech. We've also gotten a wrap from our chief political correspondent, Rachel Droz, as she talked about uh, addressing health care needs and workforce, as well as mental health and water quality. So let's go back out to Rachel, who was at the state house, who has reaction from Democrats now. Rachel, how are Democrats reacting to the governor's speech? Well, I'm joined by Senator Tony Bisignano right now, the Democrat from Des Moines. So I'm going to let him speak to you a little bit about what are your initial thoughts on hearing the governor's condition of the state today? Well, I think she hit on some points that uh, we expected. Um, she was going to talk about uh, tax cuts, that she thinks the state has recovered and our reserves are healthy enough to, to go another round of tax cuts. Um, that received mixed results. Uh, we talked about uh, mental health. Uh, that we still want to continue to fund mental health. But the thing with her proposal talks about cutting the levy to counties and for the state to pick up uh, you know, the shortfall. Not a good idea in our opinion. We'd like to see the cap on, on mental health taken off and allow counties to fund it at the levels that they choose. She did talk about child care and helping uh, lower income uh, have help with child care. That's wonderful. Uh, and also talked about uh, water quality and the one cent sales tax. Uh, that's going to be contentious because it's a matter of how you break that penny up uh, between urban and rural. And uh, she talked about uh, uh, people uh, coming out of prison, uh, trying to help them. And she talked about returning voting rights, which is very disappointing because she can do that right now as we speak. Uh, with an executive order, and we wouldn't be the last state in the country that doesn't allow it. Uh, we're still, she wants us to go through uh, the contentious issue of passing a, a constitutional amendment. And so it's a mixed speech. Um, there are some things in there that the business community likes. Uh, there are things in there that uh, the Democrats like, uh, in child care assistance, education, kind of lukewarm in the funding again. We're not adequately funding education and that's probably where our opposition is to income tax cuts we should be funding you know education first okay and that is something i was going to ask you about kind of diving into that proposal for further income tax reductions do you think that's feasible in iowa or do you think that it's something that you mentioned that education could use a boost in funding is there other places that may benefit if you keep that income tax rate where it is right now well, there was no mention of, of, of human services. Uh, we're definitely short of staff. You look at Glenwood, uh, we've got issues there. Uh, we do not have an outgoing um, senior inspector in nursing homes. And we do that by telephone. Uh, it's not a way to really inspect. So there are a number of things we could do to protect the elderly, to protect children, uh, to boost the environment and to adequately fund education at all levels, uh, whether it's K-12 or whether, you know, it's universities and private colleges. So the jump immediately back into a tax cut, which I'm sure proportionally will go to those at the top who don't need it, um, isn't a wise uh, decision, I think, and I think many, many Democrats will feel. And now you said that one area that you do support and Democrats support is child care. She talked about doubling the tax credit for child care, taking it from, I think, 45000 to 90000 Do you think that what she laid out today, I know you haven't had time to kind of go line by line through her budget yet, but do you agree with the general gist of her plan? Do you think that there's something that Democrats are going to want more of? Well, I think, I think we've hit a crossroads with Republicans on this. Uh, we've been pushing for child care assistance, knowing that it's keeping people out of the workforce. Now there's a crisis in Iowa of not enough workers. So it's really the business community who has come to the governor to say we need to do things to get people into the workforce. Um, if we talked 10 years ago and we're talking about trying to help people coming out of prison uh, and get them employed, that wouldn't be a top priority of the business community. But now with the worker shortage, uh, we're looking at available people, uh, healthy people that can work, and that's uh, mothers, that's, that's parents with child care issues, and it's people re-entering the workforce from prison. So we're hitting the crossroads, uh, which is good. Now it's all, how do we structure it and fund it? And now, 
something that I've been told by some Republican lawmakers and then also today in the governor's speech is a push for a constitutional amendment on abortion. That looked like half the room was sitting during that announcement and the other half was standing, cheering, excited about it. Where do you guys stand as Democrats and what will your fight be to, if you're against it, prevent that from going through? Well, uh, as I watched the room uh, when she dropped that, um, I don't even know if it was half the room. I mean, because there's many more Republicans in this Capitol than Democrats, and I don't think it was half the crowd. So to, to put it in the Constitution, I think it's symbolic to the, to the far right, uh, but I don't think it's, it's possible. And it's a U.S. Supreme Court issue, and that's where it's going to be decided. Uh, this just throws raw meat out to their base, and uh, you know we'll fight with that when it, when it comes through the committee process. And felon voting rights, of course, hit a snag in the Senate last year. We're told by Senator Whitfer that it should possibly be brought up again soon in judiciary, but there are some changes that he wants made that the Republicans want made. Do you think the bill is good as is, or do you agree that some changes need to be made relating to specifically levels of a felony charge? So, Well, the House sent out a very healthy vote, and when you get a healthy vote out of the House like that, um, you need to take a look at that. I understand there's probably some some issues that some senators may have. If it went to the floor of the Senate, uh, just brought out of committee, it would pass. It would probably pass by a wide margin. But there are some senators who really don't want it to pass, and so they're raising uh, red flags on, on types of crime of people they don't think should ever get their voting rights back. Some people raise the issue restitution must be paid. Uh, which is impossible for some uh, felons coming out of prison when their restitution may have been set at a million dollars. I think the House bill is adequate to pass and accomplish what we need to accomplish. And I'm being told to toss it back, but I am going to ask you one more question about something that wasn't mentioned in the speech. Cannabis, medical cannabis program was not brought up. That, of course, is something that she vetoed last year. You guys are going to try again, I'm told. Do you think that a consensus can be reached among Democrats, Republicans, the governor, her, the board, that we can get something through on medical cannabis? Well, we passed a good bill last year. It passed both chambers by a healthy margin. If we would have tried a veto override, I think that would have succeeded and we would have the law now. Uh, since the Republicans chose not to try the veto override, uh, we're going to go back and I'm sure we're going to pass something else. It's going to have to be within the parameters of the governor. Uh, she claims that it has to be scientifically based, and that's a big argument of what do you mean scientifically. Um, so more than likely what she wants is the THC level lowered. Uh, for some reason she thinks that that's a gateway to legalization. Uh, there's really no connection between the two. People need medical cannabis in this state, and we're too slow to deliver. We have to do it this year. Thank you so much. I'm going to let you go and send it back to you at the studio, Sabrina. For now, live at the Capitol, Rachel Droz, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa.